Hey everybody, <clears throat> Max again here. I um, actually would like to record a video today to explain something called Strauss-Howe Generational Theory or Fourth Turning Theory that has um, sort of been a low-key big part of the last couple years um, in terms of the rights um, suppositions as to what's what's been happening, what's going to happen. And how we can adjust to uh, to you metaphorically survive the next coming coming decade. Um, so Strauss and Howe, a couple of authors, back in the '90s, if I can get their first names here. Well, William Strauss and Neil Howe. Sorry, I'm uh, also looking at the Wikipedia article here to back myself up a little bit. Um, they break generations into uh, into these groups called secula, which are uh, groups of 80 to 90 years um, around what we would call a general human life, an average human life. Um, within each secula, we are divided into four quadrants. Uh, so you're not going to be able to see it on the camera because it's uh, front facing, so it's going to reverse. But the first secula is typically, or sorry, the first um, turning in the secula is called the uh, High point, the high turning. Um, it is usually followed by a crisis. So for instance, what I have here is the Wall Street crash of 1929 and then the Great Depression. Um, the metaphor that you can use to sort of remember how this theory works is the old adage, um, strong men make good times, good times lead to weak men, weak men lead to hard times, hard times lead to good men. So keeping that in mind, Wall Street crashes. We end up in some pretty hard times. Hard times in World War II and the Great Depression lead to good men, strong men rather, strong men lead to good times, the awakening. Like the consciousness revolution of the 1960s and the 80s when everybody was taking LSD and being flower children because we didn't need to fight war anymore. So we were sort of waking up as a culture and figuring out that we don't need to uh, be quite so violent and territorial over one another, all of that good stuff. Um, but through this, we kind of stopped uh, being as productive and, uh, I don't want to use the word hyper-masculine as sort of a net positive, but those type of people tend to yield larger results and, you know, larger GDPs, more productive nations. So as that changes, we go into the unraveling period where society begins to distrust institutions, focus more on individualism, atomize out and focus on, uh, personal enjoyment and hedonism more than, uh, productivity, which will lead you into... A crisis situation, the end of the uh, the secular. So there are a lot of people who think that we're currently in a crisis period right now, and the writing is kind of on the wall. The wall. We have a very ridiculous president who um, says all kinds of crazy things. We have a lot of different poll in the nation going a lot of different ways. We seem to have a literal brown shirts versus communists revolt going on low key, another culture war. Um, so all of these things combine to uh, to. To mean that generally you can s expect a large amount of change in the next 10 to 20 years more than likely. Um, what that change is going to be is still up to interpretation but what tends to happen coming out of a crisis and going into the high point is that individualism tends to be less valued and the, s the institution ends up becoming much stronger. This is where you see your, uh, your, your big strong governments start to erupt. Um, and that can be scary for a lot of people, people on the right and on the left. I mean, I don't want a large totalitarian communist state. Nobody on the left wants some sort of weird theocratic nonsensical thing. So just something to keep in mind. We are heading into a, a very interesting period of history. Anyway, that's all folks. Thank you very much.